Welcome to my car animation tutorial. In this video I will show you how to rig a car and animate it along a path, including physics. First we import the car and check if it is looking in the right direction. To find this out we can create a monkey head here and if the car is facing in the same direction as the monkey's head then it fits. If this is not the case we would have to mark all the parts here rotate the objects if needed, then click on apply, rotation and scale or just rotation, depending on whether you have adjusted the size. If you click on an object, it should definitely be zero degrees here and one everywhere for the scale. We are using this car for the tutorial. This is the Porsche 911 GT Street R. I've already adjusted the shading a bit here but I will make a few more adjustments later. Now it's time for the animation. Let's switch back to the solid view. And as we can see, all the individual parts are now here in this collection, but we need to sort them out a bit to rig this. You can also see the origin point is somewhere over here. We still have to adjust a few things to make it work. The tires are parented into two different objects. The tire here, of course, it rotates in two axes, one axis according to the direction of the car and one for the steering. Of course the brake should not rotate in the same way as the tire. It should only rotate because of the steering. So we select all the parts that belong to the tire and parent them to the same object. I will select this one. And now we can check whether we have selected everything. We move it with G and see that something is missing. Let's select this object here and also this one here at the center and now we have selected everything. Then we select the outer tire again, press Ctrl P, object, keep transform. Now we can just select the outer tire and can move all the objects. We do exactly the same for the brakes. We select the brake and all the parts that belong to it. Then we check again if we have selected everything by moving it. Now we select the main object. Control P and object keep transform again. Here we have connected the brake parts to the same object. And here is the tire. I will do that very quickly for all the other tires. So now we have connected all our tires here. In the collection we can see that there are already fewer objects. However, there are still quite a few because all the body parts are not yet properly connected. I now also want to parent these objects to this object down here. To not have to select them individually, I can move the tires a little down, simply select them here and the brake too, and move them one meter down for example. Now toggle X-ray, then I select the parts of the car here, except for the camera and the lights. Let's deselect them again. And this is the objects where we parent the parts of the car. Again, Control P, object keep transform. And now we have also connected the body parts to this object. Actually, we can also parent the lights. Now we move the tires up again. Simply select the objects here. G, Z and 1. And now we have everything in the right place again. Let's solve the problems with the origin. They also have to be in the center of the tire. To do this, I select the tire here, right click, set origin to geometry, then shift S and cursor to select it, so that I have the 3D cursor in the center. And now I select all the objects here from this tire and set the origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin for all the objects is in the center here. We do exactly the same with the brake. And now we got all the origins in the right place for this tire. Let me quickly do it for the other tires as well. As you can see, now we have also solved the problem with the origin and everything is in the right place. We have to do the same for the body parts. Set origin to geometry and then here 
cursor to select it, select all the objects from the body, except for the lights because we don't want to change the origin for them, and then click set origin to 3D cursor again. Now everything is in the right place and connected. Next we need to give the objects names. We use the names to assign certain parts to the rig. For example, this is now the wheel at the front right. So we name it like the car, for example Porsche 911 GTSR, wheel dot F for front and R for right. We copy this so we don't have to type it in again and again for the next tires. Now we can add the name to the other tires and only have to adjust the last letters. Here we can change it from right to left because we are on the left hand side. For the rear tires we can also add this but change from front to rear. And this is the rear wheel left. We also have to name the brakes. I will add the name here. But it's no longer the wheel, but the brake. So brake, front, right. We can also copy this name again. And here's the brake, front, left. Rear, right. And rear, left. And now we just have to give the body a name. For this, we just add body here. Now we have named everything here and can start animating. We will do the animation part with launch control. This is an add-on by Daniel Westerbeck, which you can find on Blender Market. There are also free alternatives, for example Riga Car, but launch control offers many more options to achieve better results and way more quickly. You can animate your car with just a few clicks and even with realistic physics. You can find a link to the add-on in the video description. If you want to support me, you can buy the add-on with this link. It won't cost you anything more, but I will earn a small amount from it. To rig the car now, all we have to do is select the collection and click on Rig Vehicle. We now have an animation of the car driving along the path. We can close this for now. This one too, so it's clearer. And of course we can create our own curve. With Shift A, then on Curve and Bezier. We move the whole thing up a little bit and make the curve a little larger. Click on Object, Apply and Scale again, so that we don't have any problems with the animation. Here in Launch Control we can now select the path that we have just created and click on Animate Vehicle. Let's make the scale a little smaller here so that we can see the car better. If we want to change the path now, we can simply select it, switch to Edit Mode and move it. The car will now always follow the path. However, we don't have any physics yet, but we can do this very easily with Launch Control. Simply click on the box below and enable physics. And as you can see now, we have created realistic physics here with just one click. For example, if you look at the car, you can see how it breaks. If we go to the start of the path here, we can see how it starts to drive off and leans backwards because of the acceleration. Here in the curve, we can also see that it's tilting a little to the side and all of this without keyframes. However, if we want to adjust this manually, we can do that here. Now we are finished with the rigging and can import the car into other projects without having to do this every time. We now want to import the car with the rig to our landscape from the last tutorials and animate it using the same technique. After collection of the Porsche here, you can import objects or collections by clicking on File at the top and then Append. Here you can search for your blend file with the collection and import it. But I've already done that here. I got my path for the car from the road. I did this by selecting the landscape and switching to edit mode. Here you can select the whole row using the edge select tool and holding down the alt key. 
then duplicate the selection with Shift and D and move it up a little bit. With P we can create our own objects from it and separate it from the landscape. Now we switch back to object mode and see our path here. We need a curve for the animation, so we convert the mesh here into a curve. Now we can use this to animate the car. I've already done all of this, for me it's this driving path. And I've also selected it in launch control. If we display the camera here, which is aimed at the car, then we can see how it drives along the path. I've also activated the physics here, and here are the settings for it. But I've simply selected the race car preset and only changed it very slightly under customize. To make sure that the car stays on the ground, we need to add the mesh on which the car should drive in the launch control collection under ground detection. To do this, I simply duplicated the road from the landscape, just as I did with the path. I then put the road here in this ground detection collection. We don't need to display it or render it, it's just there for launch control so that the car stays on the ground. So we have now animated the car in our landscape and can adjust the driving style a little. To change the driving paths, we switch to edit mode. Here we activate proportional editing and can use it to adjust the path along which the car drives. We can also enlarge our area and make a few turns that the car should make. Of course, we can also adjust the speed if we want the car to drive faster or slower. With the speedometer here, we can display and check the speed. In our case, the car is traveling at 68 kilometers. If we want to change this, we select the tire here and switch to pose mode. Here we open a new window and switch to the graph editor. Then we click on normalize and press the dot or comma key on the numpad so that the view is slightly adjusted and we don't have to scroll so much. And here we can change the curve that controls the position on the path. We can use it to speed up or slow down the car. If we want to add more keyframes, we can do this here under bone properties. This way we can set another point and control the car with it. For example, we want it to drive slowly at first and then start to accelerate from here. But I delete the keyframe again because I want my car to drive at a linear speed for now. I can also close this window with the graph editor again so that we can see the viewport better. After you have made some adjustments, your car may glitch around. But if you jump to the beginning of the animation, it will be back on track. This is because of the physics, because they have to be recalculated. So if you simply scroll through the animation here, it won't work. You have to let the animation run through once or bake it so that you can scroll through. If the physics are deactivated, this will not happen of course. This is how I animate cars in my animations with physics without much effort. I hope you were able to learn a few things again and see you next time.